have this amazing opportunity to connect with all of you. It's so important right now for all of us to come together. Now let's all just put our hand on our heart, close our eyes. And we're just gonna breathe in that life force energy. And as we're breathing, we're just saying to ourselves, what world do I wish to see? And just visualize the world that you see yourself in, right? Full of joy, love, truth, prosperity for all. And just create your intention for the day of what you want to receive today what you want to offer up today. And just breathe in deeply, knowing that our power of breath brings us into the present moment. We do have an amazing agenda for you today. I'm very excited. But before we get started, I'm going to bring up Sandra Quinn. And please welcome Sandra Quinn, and welcome to her home. This is, isn't this a beautiful property? <laughs> we are so blessed to be here. And I am so blessed to know Sandra. I only live a couple minutes away from, from her. Uh, we started Life First Canada together two years ago. Uh, we now have volunteers across this nation that are dedicated in supporting us and creating the vision of a parallel society. Please welcome Sandra Quinn. <laughs> so welcome to the second annual Life Force Canada Summer Celebration. Thank you all for being here. Jim, my husband and I, who a lot of you met in the driveway, are very happy to host all of you for this very special occasion. Well, Jim might just be happy, not really the berry part. But. <laughs> but what's the point of having a party palace if you don't throw a party once in a while, right? Uh, I would like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional Quinn lands, as this property has been in my husband's family since 1969. Twelve kids, many dogs, a few horses have called this home over the years, as well as many 13th children. And there's lots of flora and fauna, keep your eyes out, lots of waspily rabbits. There was a fawn in the yard the other day. Get lots of deer through here, it's a lovely place to live. There have been a multitude of events over the years, several stampede parties, a few St. Patrick's Day parties, and even a couple of life celebrations. Clock, chalk up two more for Life Force Canada. Our business was real estate development. My husband was a key visionary and architect for the Aspen Woods area. We learned about building subdivisions their way, and now I'm learning about building communities a new way. And that's partly what today is all about. Besides all the learning, sorry, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Besides all the learning and expansion experiences we were facilitating through this event, it's about building community, up close and personal, even during the preparations this week, I was grateful for the time spent in the kitchen with my sister making the cakes, and yesterday with Karen making the chili. We've drifted towards an independent and isolated existence, and after enduring the separation and suppression of the past couple of years, it's more important than ever to come together to develop connection and to foster that interdependence that will be so important for our future communities. Without you, this day would be meaningless. So we're extremely grateful that you've joined us here today to partake in this celebration of a momentous occasion. Many of you have driven a great distance to be able to be here, so I want you to know that we appreciate the presence of each and every one of you. Many people are coming together to make this day happen. A big thank you to our speakers, Doris, Ray, Alan, Kai, and Dwayne, who also helped set up, and he'll be your fire master this evening and our other workshop hosts, Sherry and Sasha. A huge thank you to the volunteers who are helping behind the scenes, Robin, Danny, Stephanie, Janine, Katika, and I think we've got a few other <laughs> recruits along the way today. So thank you all for uh, making this all work. Um, I lost my spot. <laughs> oh, you girls rock. <laughs> there it is. 
And another thanks to Sherry for preparing the lunch for our volunteers. Uh, we're also very privileged to have the musical contributions of Trevor and True. I think that has a nice ring to it. Maybe they could be a duo, Trevor and True. <laughs> Trevor will share his healing sound of the Digidaru, and True will perform for us in the afternoon and during the evening and also during our ceremony. So, I am Sandra, a living woman. I am your host. Please be gentle with me today. I will do my best to accommodate all your needs. Sometimes as host, it's hard to get to spend much time socializing. I hope I'll be able to engage with each one of you throughout the day. And I'd like to move, close with a movie quote that I think sums up the message I'd like to convey. Be our guest, be our guest, be our guest. Fly high. Fly high. Fly high. and our vision with Life Force Canada. As I mentioned earlier, we're here to create a parallel society. And that can be a challenging idea because we're so indoctrinated into the society that we're in right now. But I want to tell you that we have the power to create a new earth. You all, you all know that already, right? Yes. We are going to go through challenging times. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We are going to be challenged mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. This is why coming in community, coming into community is so key, right? Now, there is a four, I would say four steps in how we step into creating a parallel society. One is intentional communities. Unfortunately, I do not have a microphone that I can move around, so I need to be here, but if I did have one, I'd be all over the place. <laughs> now, I want to create a, a, a visual here for all of you in your minds on what an intentional community can look like. How many of you have heard David from Talking Tree in regards to his intentional community? So brilliant, a brilliant man. He has the business plan to create an intentional community, right down to how much the hammer is. So I'm just gonna share with you my version of an intentional community. And there are many different versions. It, the intentional community that you wanna step into, you get to create that because you are sovereign. I'm just going to share the model here because it just allows you to have a visual of what's truly possible. So we're just going to use our imagination. Now, just say we now purchased, we're the intentional community. And our intentional community can fit like 144 people, say. And we just bought 500, 1,000 acres, let's go big, 1,000 acres. And I believe in circular the power of circles, the power of, of, sphere, of, of uh, spirals, the power of sacred geometry. And I see in the center of this intentional community is our community center. And I love domes, I love dome homes, I, I love dome structures. So if we were to have three domes, one would be for meetings like this, workshops, right? Big community space for all of us to come together and celebrate. Another dome can be for uh, gatherings in the kitchen, right? Uh, we can have a community kitchen, a restaurant, uh, whatever it is, and for us to really begin to eat healthy food. The no next dome can be our space for meditation, for yoga, uh, moving our bodies, whatever that looks like. And then we move out from that space, that central location, and we move out into a concentric circle. And the next circle will be where all our homes are our beautiful homes. 
and you can have any home that you like. You can have an earth brand home, you can have a dome home, an earthship home, uh, whatever pleases the heart. And when we have our homes, we're going to have trees separating our homes. We're going to have no fences. We are going to be able to have pathways. We're going to have orchards so that when you walk on those pathways, you can just grab an apple and eat it. And then the next concentric circle is where all our businesses are going to be. Can you imagine having our, you know the schools today, right? The schools today are like prisons for the kids. We don't need that in our intentional community. We can now create beautiful buildings, beautiful structures that not only kids, but adults can say, wow, I want to step into that building. That building is alive. It feeds my soul. That's what we get to create. And those businesses can be health clinics. They can be where you are creating your own ham clothing. It can be whatever you want around the community. And then we move out to the next concentric circle. And that's where we have our greenhouses, our hemp fields. We have whatever it is we choose to grow. Healthy food. Doesn't that sound lovely? Right? That's a potential reality that we can step into. And how, do we tr uh, how can we protect that intentional community? We protect it through a private membership association. It's an agreement. And that's what we're going to be signing today, if you so choose. We have our Plan Council Alberta private membership agreement. And this is how we claim our sovereignty. This is how we step out of the public domain, the government regulations, the licensing, the fake mandates, the fake bylaws, the superficial reality out there, and we step into the private domain. This is where our freedom is. And it's as simple as a three-page document. So simple. It's not easy getting here because it's a shift in the mind. It's a shift in the heart. But this is a possibility. And we'll be speaking more about this throughout the day. The next step is natural law. Mark Passio, how many of you are familiar with Mark Passio? He is an incredible man and he's been, I think he's one of the most incredible human beings on the planet has been teaching natural law for quite some time. And I'm just going to read a few of his quotes because this is all we need to step into, is natural law. The natural law is a set of universal non-man-made, non-man-made, binding and unchangeable conditions which govern the behavioral consequences of beings with capacity for holistic intelligence cannot be changed by anyone or anything. So Mark Passer describes natural law is what governs the collective free will, behavioral choices of entire populations by manifesting the consequences of the behaviors that we choose. The consequences which we receive are always dependent upon whether our chosen behaviors are immoral or moral. In other words, right or wrong. We all have free will in which behaviors we conduct, we are not insulated by the consequences of our moral, cho moral choices. Harmful actions are wrongdoings, such as murder, assault, rape, trespass, coercion, and willfully lying. If we analyze harmful actions, we will see that they are all variations of theft in one form or another. Murder is the theft of life. Assault is the theft of another's well-being. Rape is the theft of free will sexual association. Theft is the stealing of property. Trespass is the theft of the security of one's living domain. Coercion is the theft of free will choice via violence or duress. How much are we seeing that out there in the protests around the world? Willfully lying is the theft of necessary information which negatively impacts someone else's ability to engage in informed decision making. So since all wrongdoings are a form of theft, natural law can be summed up as do not steal. Natural law is a moral law. Since these 
Laws govern in the invisible background. They are not a belief system or a religion. It constitutes the scientific measurable and repeatable effects in the world. It requires no belief, no faith. Natural law is also known as moral law, the law of cause and effect, consequentialism, karma, law of the land, the golden rule. David Strait reminds us, love David Strait, he reminds us that if we reclaim our status as sovereign in the private domain, you now become immune to all the 60,000 plus statutory laws as they do not apply to the living man or woman. Isn't that amazing? So what is Plan Council Alberta and how does that come in under the umbrella of Life First Canada. I want you to know there's no hierarchy here. So Life First Canada is in the center, it's the hub. And we're here to share knowledge. And the Plan Council Alberta is here to also share the knowledge. So what we're doing is we're creating Plan Council BC, Plan Council Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, etc. And this is like a council of elders that are sharing what I just shared with you. You are all at the beginning of the new earth. You are, all, you are all here as founding members. You're all here and you are going to be called to begin sharing the knowledge that's in your heart as we begin to move forward on this incredible journey to sovereignty. We are already sovereign. We're, the, the matrix that we live in, we all know, right, has, has fooled us all in some degree, right? So we're here to reclaim that back. So now if you, if you look again, back to the intentional community that I all shared with you, just imagine that intentional community, the homes, the community center, the businesses, the agriculture, and then you have another intentional community, and another one, and another one and another one. And they're all signing their own private membership association. So they exit the public domain, right? What begins to happen is now you being a member, you now, the benefits are incredible. You now get to do business and trade with everyone within those intentional communities outside of government regulations. We're not taught this, are we? How many of you knew of a private membership association before? Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of people know the power in PMAs. The dark elites, they've known about private membership. That's how come they've been able to get away with what they get away with. They don't have big taxes. They know the power. But we're just taking that information and we're going to use it for the light. <laughs> we're going to use it to empower us. With a private membership, you get to then link to all these different businesses, towns. There's a town now in BC that they're creating a private membership. There are so many doctors. This is really big in the United States. It's not very big in Canada right now, but it's huge in the U.S. There's many doctors that are creating health clinics right now and they have their private membership practice. They also have the practice in the public domain, but they're keep, they keep it separate, right? So for over here, for everyone in the private domain, they get to offer holistic practices that normally are, of course, not allowed or are restricted, or they'll get sued or fined if they practice over here in the public domain, but come over here in the private, they get to do what they want, so long as it stays within their membership gives us freedom, freedom to be who we are. Now again, we're just starting out. We're all learning, just as you're learning. We've all never been here before, okay? So this is a new a pathway that we're all taking. So Plan Council Alberta is a resource and knowledge sharing center. We're here to empower towns, communities, counties to begin stepping out of that public domain. And then our fourth step in regards to creating a parallel society is the bridge. 
and Ray is here today talking about the bridge. You're going to love listening to Ray and the possibilities that are here for us because we need to build that bridge from the public to the private, from the corrupt world to the new earth. And we all have the power to do that. How exciting is that? Okay. If you have yet to sign up at Life Force Canada, the website, like lifeforcecanada.ca, I do recommend you sign up because that's how you discover what we have going on. And we're going to be creating Life Force Canada as a private membership as well. Everything we're stepping into, we're stepping out of that public domain. I've actually let go of my corporation. I've had it for 20 years, Imagine Seminars. I am dissolving my corporation. I am truly stepping into the private domain. Yes! <laughs> Thank you. Okay, first up. A little bit later this afternoon, and then we are doing a full day workshop. Kai's going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, I'll give you a tiny bit of a background on on how we got to the bridge, essentially, or how the, the bridge came about. So I was the last member. Has, does anyone know about uh, Michael Tellinger and the uh, um, One Small Town? Does anyone not know about it? <coughs> okay, so there's a fellow named Michael Tellinger. He's in South Africa about 15 years ago. He came up with this idea of how to basically do what we're doing. Um, uh, so he called that the One Small Town or, or Ubuntu, contribution, Ubuntu Contributionism. Uh, we tried that at the time five years ago. Uh, our attempt in North Frontenac, Ontario was the only attempt in the world. I was the last person on that team. One other person on the team was Cindy, and she was the very first person on the team and the very last person. She was the bookends of that entire attempt. Um, that attempt didn't work, uh, but the learning from that is where we got the bridge from. I was the last person on that team, so I got kind of an outsider's perspective after they had kind of um, um, done some of their work. Um, so that's where the bridge came from. Uh, that was five years ago. We started theorizing it about two and a half years ago. We put the bridge model into practice, into, into real world settings, because we were, okay, so two and a half years theorizing some model on PowerPoint. That's great, right? But what does it actually mean in, in reality? So two and a half years ago, we started our first business. It's a woodworking business to see what this theoretical PowerPoint presentation actually does in real world scenarios with money and customer transactions. Um, that, so that's been the last two and a half years and we've been able to refine the theory uh, from that, that real life learning. And so obviously the report here now is the bridge model, the theory of the bridge actually works. Um, and so now I'll explain what the bridge is. <laughs> All, a lot of the stuff that Karen was talking about, I think of as the what to do, right? Set up a PMA and set up an intentional community, possibly buy land, possibly doing it uh, where you live now. Uh, alternative health care. Those are all the what to do's. The bridge is the how to do, and the quick, the quick, the quick version on how to kind of uh, conceptualize this is: we have an outgoing system right now. Um, I think of it as an operating system, and it's commerce. Right? It's based on trade, um, trade with money, trade uh, a barter system. I'll do this for you. You do that for me. Uh, I'm a citizen, or I'm a person. You're the government. We. There's that sort of a, it's a dependent relationship and that's the platform of commerce. So think from a, like a cell phone perspective, that's the OS, all right? It's the, it's commerce, it's trade. The bridge is a collaborative model. And so all of these things that we have out in the world, alternative uh, medicines and education systems and gardening and permaculture, all these sorts of things, if they try to operate on this outgoing trade commerce or um, uh, tra uh, commerce platform, we just end up going back in, to, to the same thing that we you know, 80 years from now. But the bridge is actually a collaborative model. So I think from a cumulative pr perspective, all the businesses, all the projects out, out in the world on this platform, all the upgraded, evolved way of thinking on this platform, which of those two operating systems is gonna take us into the future, right? And so that's what the bridge is. It's a collaborative operating system, like a human societal operating system. It's not a digital operating system, it's not an app, I just think of it as an OS. So that's the quick version of kind of what the bridge is. Some features of it, it um, so we have the outgoing system is a two-dimensional, right? You're either going more or less your side, but you, you're, it's a two-dimensional, single plane, two-dimensional way of looking at life, logical only. The bridge actually adds a depth, it adds an emotional aspect to it. And so the three, as the three areas of the bridge are business, finance, projects, all that kind of stuff like we're familiar with in, in, in the world today. It also integrates 
community collaboration or interpersonal uh, relationships. So that's part of the actual fabric of society. Right now we have, uh, if you get along or you don't get along, that's irrelevant. Our platform, our societal systems right now, don't care whether you get along. When you're at work, you're getting along. Deal with it, deal with the rest of it on your own time. And then the third aspect of the bridge is, or third area of the bridge is personal development. Um, because the way that we frame this is if humans can't um, evolve is a strong word, but it's actually accurate, but if humans don't evolve and pur purge their traumas and become authentic and that sort of thing, we just simply can't get along. And all of our great projects moving into the future simply won't work if we're not actually getting along. And this is, look at any social experiment of people get, trying to uh, start an intentional community, all of them whittle down to 12 people left kind of thing because they couldn't get along. So the bridge model, this upgraded operating system, integrates the projects, the overt stuff uh, that you see out in the world. It also integrates interpersonal skills and personal development. And that's where it becomes, it's a holistic model of society. It's not just go to work, deal with the personal stuff uh, on your own. Um, and that's how that's how we can move forward. I actually realize it's, it's, burgeoning, it's burgeoning into a, uh, a fourth dimension, fourth spatial dimensional thing. So I'm actually coming full circle back to confusing myself about this whole model <laughs> because it's got this whole other aspect of it. So I'm not sure exactly what to say, but um, so uh, I'll give a bit of background on what we've done so far. Uh, two and a half years ago, we started a woodworking business. We reclaimed pellets. Uh, we call the business skid marks, right? Pallet skids. And so the original model was we reclaimed pallets from um, uh, the back alleys, say behind the you know, local shops. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, you know, thank you for having me here today. You know, I, this is a new experience for me, as everything is. You know, it's the first. I never imagined uh, 12 months ago uh, that I would be standing here uh, this year at this time, sharing with you guys anything. So you know, I've. I've been used to attending a lot of the groups, learning a lot of information, just kind of sitting in the back. Uh, back, but you know, uh, after you know uh, taking the time and learning about Life Force and finding my way to Life Force Canada, I'm like, I, I, I knew that uh, things were happening around the world and in the universe were starting to come together. And the dark through that, I, I, I'm like, okay, Karen's got, uh, got Canada going. You know, we got Alberta and all the provinces going. I'm like, okay, where can I fit in? I'm like, you know, if nobody's doing Calgary, I'll do Calgary. But uh, you know what, uh, as uh, they were getting things going and everything here, um, uh, there was a three month provision. So I, you know, attended all the meetings, watched everything, uh, you know, Monday and Tuesday, what was happening in Canada, what was happening in Alberta, but I also was watching the global stage, just kind of seeing what was going on. And after that three month probation and everything here, now we're almost at the end of the year. And that kind of came to a point where um, they decided that, that they wanted to jab the children in. I'm a dad, and uh, that's that's kind of where I drew the line in the sand. But uh, you know, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I hopped on the first call for uh, you know uh, Life Force Canada and Alberta, and I'm grateful that Sandra offered to do that first orientation. And you know, I, and I thought that whatever I was going to do, you know, I, I I should make a commitment because I want to see this through because my I'm not going to sit around and wait for the days that they would come and take our kids and take our families and rip us apart. So I felt that I had to do something. And after that first meeting and Sandra kind of getting us going, you know, I'm grateful for the people that showed up in that first initial meeting. And then, uh, you know, with all of our resources and everything, it slowly kind of came together, you know, from that first meeting, Lori offered her Zoom uh, account so we could use with us. So from that moment on, I decided, I'm like, okay, every Thursday at 6.30, uh, we do our Calgary Plan Council meeting, and we've been meeting every single week uh, this year up until now. Because, you know, uh, from looking at all the different models and things that are out there in the world, the one thing that I kind of realized, you know, what uh, I love the idea of intentional communities. I love the, of the idea of us collaborating and coming together. But you know what? You know what? I'm a fairly competitive person, and you know what? And I had this discussion with Ray yesterday. My wife is from mainland China. You know, and uh, you know, I have no intention of moving out to uh, the boonies or anything and starting really starting all over. If you guys watched any documentaries about creating an intentional community, it is a lot of work to develop your lands, your road, your sewage system. There are a lot of factors that come into building a community. And you know what, it was interesting because you know what, I have this dual dynamic in my life that you know, what, my wife is from mainland China. She grew up growing organic food. They are, they're already part of a the community. They're in a village. 
you know, and coming here to the Western world, like they have no intention of going back, you know, but because knowing what I know and what, how I grew up and everything here and then learning about, uh, you know, how they're trying every way, shape or form to control and uh, kill, hum kill humanity off, uh, I, I was not interested in participating in that. So, you know, uh, we've got the Calgary plan, so go on Cal, so uh, going and, you know, what? Uh, paying attention and looking at all the meetings and, uh, and the information that Karen was sharing uh, and everything. I realized that, you know what, I didn't have to do everything myself. And uh, we had the opportunity of uh, ancient brown bear child to jump onto our calls. <clears throat> and she shared with us that, that sense of urgency and really the community needs that are out there and everything. And you know what, and um, my research into, uh, I guess I had an opportunity to find a mystery school here in Calgary. And uh, I've, I've been one of those, always been one of those people who made myself a guinea pig. I will, I will try everything and, and, you know, prove it to myself. And you know that's that's really the beauty of you know being human is, is for us to have that experience and really find and have that knowingness uh, for you, and that way you're able to really discern you know what is right, what is good, and the direction that you wanted to go. And yes, so uh, yeah, I, I found a mystery school, so I was able to find my way to uh, the uh, the Rainbow Bridge. So you know, opportunity to really kind of double down and go within. And I'm grateful for you know COVID, uh, even though you know really turned all our lives upside down. And I realized the world was so crazy. I'm like, I really can't change everything out here. So uh, I doubled down. I, I finally started meditating in my life, you know? <laughs> but uh, finding that connection to the source and to life, to everything that we are really truly connected. And I'm grateful that, you know, I, I have that connection. So, you know, uh, if we take the time to develop that, we really become fearless. So like, I'm kind of at a point where there's, you know, nothing's gonna hold me back. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep moving forward in, in this path that we're doing. So, uh, you know what, uh, being this, uh, event, it's uh, so amazing to be here. Um, like she said, I'm um, a lawyer and a member of Lawyers for Truth, and uh, we did start in late 2020, and this was um, shortly after the uh, masking came in, and we met at a rally, and um, uh, when I met with these other lawyers, we were just like, okay, this is going to have to be about the people. The people are going to have to rise up if we're going to... Um, overcome what's happening in our world um, so yeah just very very concerned about the abuses we were seeing at that at that time and, and it just progressively got worse and worse and um, and so one of the first things that we actually did was we came up with these mask exemption certificates and you know a poster for businesses saying you know what you got to respect people that don't wear a mask for whatever reason and we did rely on the Charter and human rights I mean those are tools that were available to us they do um, you know, provide for our bodily autonomy and medical freedom, and so we use those. Um, however, since then, you know, I Karen sent me all these links on natural law and um, reclaiming our status, and I've watched them, and I'm like, okay, I can see how the charter, you know, it's a government uh, sort of tool, and, and and all of the statutes really, and so I became really intrigued with um, with all of that, and it makes a lot of sense. However, um, we do still live in this society where people are still quite oblivious to what's going on. Um, and, and so, you know, I continue to, to work um, in this area. Uh, what I say? Um, so, I guess one of the, I, I'll, I'll talk to you about, uh, a little bit about what's happened, though. Um, our law society, who, if you go to their website, they're all about, you know, we're here for the people, we're here to protect the public, that kind of thing. And as a lawyer, I'm allowed to advocate for people's rights and freedoms. However, they did not like these mass certificates, which they were somehow becoming aware of. I don't know if somebody was sending them in or, or whatever, but, you know, suddenly I get this call going, like, we need to talk to you, and that kind of thing. So that, you know, there's been some letter writing and a little bit of questioning, and they still, like, they, they still want to kind of keep harping on it. Um, so they're like, yeah, we're, we're doing this, like, part three, section 53 investigation on you, and I'm like, okay, well... <laughs> I'm like, well, what are you alleging that I've done wrong, right? And they can't seem to answer that question. So uh, that's kind of going on. Um, the other thing that sort of happens um, that I know, you know, we're on the right track. We need to eventually step out of this government system uh, law, you know, included. And um, one of the other things that keeps coming out from the law society is, hey, lawyers, you can't be, you know, swearing these affidavits that are, you know, from Freeman on the land. And here's this case, you know, um, there's no such thing as Freeman on the land, and these are violent people, and, 
and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we kind of keep physicians and surgeons telling doctors what they could and couldn't do, couldn't prescribe ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine, that kind of thing. And then, you know, we see the same sort of thing with our law society, who is also obviously infiltrated um, by these, the dark forces, I guess we can call them, right? Um, so essentially what that tells me is that um, our mind and our voice is very powerful, right? Like they have to try to silence someone like me and you know other lawyers who are out there fighting. Um, so keep keep fighting, right? Keep keep going out there, keep asserting your autonomy. Don't wear a mask if, if, unless you want to, but um, you know we certainly think that that the greatest symbol of is suppression of our rights and freedoms. So just in life force right in the very beginning because they were always talking about the future and building a better way. Um, and then I sort of got involved in other things. I got involved, as Karen said, in Freedom <coughs> Rising. Um, there was a couple of us came together and really the reason why we came together is that we could see all these little groups talking about stuff and having their own plans and having their own agendas. And we thought, let's try and bring them together. It was going right back to that need for collaboration and unity right in the beginning. So we started getting the leaders to come together, started getting to talk. We established a website to try and have a directory of them all. And as I say, now we've got to the point where there's over 400 groups and organizations in Canada alone and tens of thousands internationally. And we're trying to get this collaboration. We're seeing that beginning to happen. We're seeing initiatives being pulled and coming to fruition because people are now talking, people are coming together. And of those 400, there's still probably two or three or four that are still specifically looking at building a better future. And I think um, I became the executive director of Canada Health Alliance probably about eight months ago, so fairly recently. And again, that organization appealed to me because they originally started off as a networking group for doctors and nurses and healthcare practitioners at right at the beginning of this whole madness. Um, but there's networking groups everywhere now, um, and they've become very local, so people can meet face to face like this. And as a national organization, we thought, well, because it doesn't make a difference if Canada Health Alliance or Life Force are going to be part of that 400 group. 402 isn't really going to make a difference between 402 and 400. Let the people who want to man the barricades, let them do that. Let them change the current system. But we've got to have a new system to go to. We've got to have the future ready. Otherwise, what we saw happen in uh, Eastern Europe when the wall came down, all of those countries broke up into little bickering fights because they hadn't prepared. You think about some of those countries, they only had communist politicians. So sure, they voted them in, but it was just perpetuating the same system. We don't want to do that. We want to know what we're going to. We want to have the control and involvement to have been part of that uh, opportunity to actually like to have met. And yet my life seems to have just been bringing me to this point. And I've had, well, in fact, I'm sure we've all had an interesting background and we all know the deep secrets and the learnings that we've had. I grew up in a sort of reasonably Christian society. My parents were practicing religion, but they dragged us off to church on Sundays and go to Sunday school and that sort of thing. And about at the age of about 20 or so, I sort of drifted off from that because why wouldn't you? Do that? It's like that embraced the whole thing. I wanted to live my own life. And for a long time I did. And I just think what wasted years because now there is this spiritual awakening. There is something happening. Something in my life is happening. I'm feeling things are different. I'm connecting with different people. And it's not a religious thing. There's no organized religion in my life. But there's something that seems to be pulling me in a certain direction. Something that opened the door for me to step out of my corporate job, which was very comfortable I made really good money, I was working with great people. I had no reason to leave, but I knew that I had to. I knew that there was something more. And I think that when you stand on the moral high ground and you have the, the conviction to stand by your beliefs and the courage to do that, then destiny starts to show the way. The doors seem to start opening. And I've definitely seen that in my life to the point now, I don't know how to meditate, but I need to learn because I need to start connecting. I need to find out who's driving this destiny of mine and where is it going to end up i know i haven't fulfilled my destiny so what is it it's happening around the corner so therefore what do i have to be afraid of because if destiny is still heading me in that direction for something that i need to do 
I'm not going to be squashed like a bug and die in the process. And if I do, maybe I go to a better place. But because I know that there's a destiny, then I'm not really as afraid as I was before I realized that. Because I know I'll be given the chance to fulfill that, whether I choose to or not. That's always the, the, the human choice that we've got. But it's going to be presented to me. And I think it's going to be presented to all of us. So I think remember, remember those points. Remember to always have the moral high ground. We need to become better people. And I know that for my own life because I wasted 25 or 30 years just you know trying to accumulate wealth, having a good time traveling, doing all the things I wanted to. But if we live by moral high ground, and these days we really have to because we're in a war between good and evil, and we don't want to help the other side in any way, we've got to be on the moral high ground have the courage and conviction for what we're doing. And I think, again, I just look to the examples, like Lawyers for Truth. I've been watching Lawyers for Truth right from the beginning. And what an amazing couple of people. It's not, not a great group of people, but what an example to the rest of us. And I think that's the thing as well. Think about it. There are people that see you as a role model. You might not know it. A lot of us don't know that people look at us as role models. But there are people out there that look at you personally as a role model. Everything that you do, everything you stand for, is going to make a difference to them. So have that courage and conviction. Know that we have to become role models. And, it, you know, that's the whole thing about the, the grocery store experience just blows my mind because we just need some provision. For goodness sake, give us a right to do that. And yet you've got to stand by the moral high ground. You've got to be the example. Whether I ever change my mind and said, oh, you know, I'm going to give up and just take the jab and do what they want me to do. I could never do that because we've now made a stand. We've said, this is not the right thing to do. So we can never, because people look up to us, because people respect who we are as individuals and what the decisions and, and the logic that we make on things, we can never back down. We have to know we've got to fight every day for what's right because eventually, I mean, I'm sure, God with one human being on earth would be able to defeat all the forces of evil. So we've got to stand. We've just got to know that we're on the right side and not be intimidated by how many people are involved or how many forces are ranged against us. And that again brings me like as the last point back to destiny. Think about it. Think about have you fulfilled your destiny? I'm pretty sure all of us can't really answer that question. We haven't fulfilled our destiny. But let's keep an eye to that, and let's keep going in that direction. And by doing that, I think we take everybody along with us. I'm quite sure most of us are going to live to see the rebuilding of this new society that we planned. And that's, again, what drew, drew me to Life Force right in the very beginning. Let's start planning that, let's start doing that, let's start sharing the information, because maybe that's our destiny. Sometimes, Maybe the destiny of certain individuals is to be a martyr that triggers everything else. And I guess we just have to have the courage to face that. Because if we believe that we are spiritual beings that maybe chose to come here to help humanity right at this time, I think there's a pretty good chance that that might happen or might have happened. We might have all said we want to be part of saving this planet. If that is the case, um, and in 10,000 years and we're sitting on our puffy clouds reminiscing about this. <laughs> How long is this life going to be? It'll just seem like a fleeting moment. Yeah, we had fun back there, didn't we? Think about what we did. We're not going to remember the pain at the time. I, I don't know if any of you have read much Shakespeare. In, in what a great group. And today, after you've heard all the speakers, you can actually see how it is a full circle. Because everyone spoke here today about their piece of the circle. And there's no accident that we're here at this time. I want you to think of it for a moment, just how infinitesimal these odds are that you're here. Not just in this backyard, but here in this level of awareness. You've been through a lot. You've gone through more pain, more struggle, more suffering, than most people could endure because no one else can handle it. You can handle it. That's why you're dealing with it. Number two, people call you crazy, weird, out to lunch. Yeah, 
because you can take it. You are here because they out there couldn't sign up to what you're signed up for. They are the inorganic ones and they are crumbling and they know it. They are so afraid of this. Look how benevolent this group is. Yet they're so afraid. This freaks them out. So know that that's your power. This is your power. <laughs>